Hey, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of Mr. Bell's Math. So uh, let's get started. I know you're excited about this. I know I am. All right, so today we're going to talk about identifying the opposite and the absolute value of a rational number. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, by the end of the video, you need to be sure that you understand how to identify the opposite of a rational number. You also need to be able to identify the absolute value of a rational number. Now we already know how to do this with integers, so it's not going to change too much when we're dealing with uh, rational numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I first want you to think about is positive and number, negative numbers in general. If you're going to the right of zero on the number line, you're going to have positive numbers. All right, and the further right you go, the bigger the numbers get. However, negative numbers go to the left of zero on the number line, and the further left you go the smaller the number gets now and actually this happens at anywhere on the number line okay if i'm at the positive side of the number line say i'm at number nine and i go to the left to five i five is less than nine okay so the same thing happens on the negative side of the number line you know less than, numbers less than zero if i'm at negative nine and i go to negative 17 I'm, I'm, that goes to the left so negative 17 is less than negative nine so that's a real important concept to understand, okay? So let's keep both those things in mind. So the first thing I want to talk about is the opposite, all right, of a rational number. So I got about four examples that we're going to go over, and that way you're familiar with how to do this with. Now, we should know how to do this already with integers, okay? So all I'm going to touch on here in this video is the uh, rational number portion of this. You need to know how to identify the opposite of an integer. We've done that in class. All right, this is strictly, strictly rational numbers. Okay, so I got a couple examples I want to go over. The first two are 4.3 and negative 2.8. So I'm going to graph 4.3 on the number line. All right, now my number line is set up just in, um, it goes in every other number. All right, so uh, we need to kind of guesstimate about where this number is going to go. So 4.3 is... Uh, positive so it goes to the right so here's 4 on the number line and 4.3 is just going to be a little bit past it to the right because it's bigger than 4 all right so we're just going to say and my must make my circle a little bit smaller that's still a little huge uh, yeah that'll work so 4.3 we'll just say is about right there okay so to find the opposite of this number we just basically count how far away from 0 4 is 4.3 is and then we go to the other direction of zero okay so it is and this is two this is four and then just a little bit more so to find its opposite I go two four and just a little bit more and we'll say it's right there okay that's all you have to do so the opposite of 4.3 is negative 4.3 okay how about negative 2.8 let me change colors here um, so the first thing we want to do is graph negative 2.8. So you start at 0, you count to the left because of this, the negative, to negative 2, but 0.8 makes it a little bit bigger than negative 2, or a little bit smaller rather, because we're going to the left. So it's somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3 is, is my point. So negative 3 is in the middle, so negative 2.8 is just a little shy of the middle. Okay. Now, to find the opposite of negative 2.8, we go in the opposite direction, the same number of places. So if I went two places and then a little bit, I'm going to go two places and then just a little bit, and we should be about right there. Okay? So the opposite of negative 2.8 is just plain old 2.8. Okay? Let's look at a couple more examples. These are going to be fractions. All right? I got one and one third. And I have 3 and 4 fifths. So I definitely want to try to graph both of these. Let me use blue here. Uh, so 1 point, I mean not 1 point, but 1 and 1 third is positive. So it's going to go to the right of 0. So 1's right here in the middle. And then 1 third is just a little bit past it. Okay, so it's about right there we'll say. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing going the opposite way of 0. 1's about right there. So with 1 and 1 third, it's a little bit past it going to the left. So it's actually right about there. Okay? So the opposite is the same distance from 0 that the original number is, but in the opposite direction. 
So negative 3 and 4 fifths. Let me change it to, oh, it's too purple. Negative 3 and 4 fifths. So that means I go to negative 3, which is about right there, because that's halfway between 2 and 4. And 4 fifths is almost all the way to 4. So it's going to be about right there. All right, so to find its opposite, I go in the opposite direction of zero from negative uh, three and four fifths. So I went two, and then I went three, and then I went a little bit more. So I'm going to go two to the right, three is in the middle, and a little bit more, almost all the way to four, and it's about right there. Okay, so that's it. The opposite of one and one third is negative one and one third. And the opposite of negative 3 and 4 fifths is 3 and 4 fifths. Okay? Let's talk about something else here real quick. Absolute value. All right? If I want to find the absolute value of a number, then that shouldn't be too hard. We just need to find out how far from 0 it is. I mean, it's, it's very similar to opposite here are my first two numbers five and two third or five and twenty three hundredths four and negative two and twelve hundredths okay so the first thing i want to do is graph five and twenty three hundredths so that's positive so it goes to the right so i go two four and then five is just a little bit a little bit it's in between four and six and then that twenty that point two three is just makes it a little bit past halfway all right so how far, remember, absolute value is the distance a number is from zero on the number line. And I think in my last video, I thought it's always, always, always positive. Okay, so the answer to a absolute value problem is always positive. I don't know that I can express that enough. I still saw some folks putting negatives on it. Okay, and we also designate absolute value with these vertical bars. Okay, they're not ones. I saw some of y'all do that on your answers. You put ones there, but it's just a vertical bar, and it's on the it's on the right side of the keyboard if you're ever trying to use them. Okay, so the absolute value of 5.23 is you got to count how far it is from zero on the number line. So two, four, five, point two three. So the absolute value of 5.23 is 5.23. All right, let's change colors. Let me make this a little bit thinner if I can. Um, I want to use the highlighter. Well, that's okay. Doesn't matter. All right, here's my absolute value bars. I'm looking for the absolute value of negative two and twelve hundredths. So to do that. Let me get that small one. Yeah, that works. Okay, negative two and, and twelve hundredths. So I got to go to two, and then I got to go just past two, just a little bit. Okay, and I find out how far that is from zero. It is two places plus that little extra to be exact. It's twelve hundredths of, of of a unit. So the absolute value of negative two and twelve hundredths is two and 12 hundredths. All right, it's positive. If it's a negative number you're getting the absolute value of, the answer is going to be positive. If it's a positive number you're getting the absolute value of, the answer is going to be positive. It's always, always, always positive answer for absolute value only. Okay, opposites you're going to have either a positive or a negative. All right, so let's look one more at a couple fractions. I got negative six and three fifths. And I have 7 and 5 twelfths. So I'm going to erase some of this real quick. All right. So first thing I need to do, once again, is to make sure I draw my absolute value bars, which is here and here. And I also want to do it in, let's do the purple. I've got absolute value bars here and here. And that just tells me, you should know by looking at this, that it wants the absolute value of these numbers. Okay. So. First thing I want to do is graph negative six and three fifths on the number line. Oop, let me get rid of those numbers. All right, uh, negative six and three fifths. So I got to start at zero, go two, four, six. And three fifths is a little better than halfway. So remember, seven is here, so it's not quite to the halfway mark here, but it should be somewhere around there. So the distance from zero is two, four, six, and a little bit more, about three fifths more. So guess what our absolute value is? Six and three fifths.
All right, you should know this as we do it. Okay, next one is seven and five twelfths. So I start at zero on the number line and I count to seven and five twelfths. So I got two, four, six, seven is going to be right in between six and eight. All right, and then five twelfths is yeah, just shy of halfway between there and there. So I'm going to put it right about there. Okay, and then we count how far that number is from zero on the number line, and that tells us its absolute value. All right, so it's two places, four places, six places, seven places, plus a little bit more. Okay, so guess what my absolute value is? It is seven and five twelfths. Notice I didn't put a negative sign there because absolute value is what? Always positive. Okay, please remember that. Please, please, please.